Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Amen. I would like to focus on the Gospel reading that we just read, but only on one word from the Gospel. And I want to use my reflection based on that one word, which is called as Nazarene. The Gospel passage ended with the word Nazarene. It is a very strange word but a lot of implication. We will know that the prophet said, I called my son out of Egypt. So when the blessed Lord was called out of Egypt to go back to the city called Nazareth, he lived there until he was approximately 30 years old. Nazareth is the crucible in which our blessed Lord was formed. What do we mean by crucible? A cup. Like a cup. He was as though placed in a cup and he was formed internally by the virtues of the Holy Spirit that the mother of God and his foster father Joseph taught him how necessary it is in modern times to be understanding the necessity of forming children in the virtues of the gospel, in the virtues of God. The book of Proverbs will tell us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Which means if wisdom has to happen to us, we must have the fear of the Lord or reverence for the Lord within us. All children would know that if a cup has to be full, sorry, if you have to pour something into a cup, the cup has to be empty first. Without the cup being empty, you cannot pour tea or coffee or milk or water into a cup. When the Lord our God emptied himself of all the glory of heaven and took on the form of a child, he emptied himself of everything so that he made his heart and mind available to be formed again in the virtues of the Holy Spirit. Why is it necessary for God to be formed in the virtues of the Holy Spirit? He is God himself. Does God need to be formed? God does not need to be formed. This was given to us as a lesson so that we humans understand the beauty and the necessity of forming our own children in the virtues of the Holy Spirit so that we realize the necessity of wisdom, so that we realize the necessity of patience, so that we realize the necessity of perseverance, of faith, of joy, of steadfastness, of faithfulness, of self-control and all the other fruits and gifts of the Holy Spirit which needs to be formed in one's own household. The formation process or Nazareth is one and the same. Therefore, what is the relevance of Nazareth in modern time? A Christian is supposed to walk the talk. Can you say that loudly with me? Walk, walk the talk. And talk. Walk the talk. Walk and talk. Not walk and talk. I walk said a Christian is supposed to walk the talk. Walk, walk the talk. talk. What does that mean? It means that we got to live a life of virtues and the life of virtues that we live should give birth to the words and the actions that we have with one another. For out of the abundance of one's heart, the mouth is speaking, is what the word of God would say to us. Therefore, I ask just this one question. Who is the former? Who forms us? The most important part in this formation process is definitely that of our parents. We must never ever forget that the instruction that our parents give us must be tied as though to our neck so that we always remember. But in all of this, the real former is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit uses the instruments who are our parents to form us in the virtues of the Holy Spirit. Without being formed at home, it is 
is impossible to start one's mission in the world. Please understand that our blessed Lord was first formed at home and then he was sent forth into the world to give the good news to the poor. First was internal formation, then comes external formation. This world teaches us that it's okay for us to open our mouth and talk even if we don't know. The Gospels teach us that first comes internal formation, then comes external formation because out of the abundance of one's heart, the mouth is speaking. So I end this short reflection with just one quality that I would like us to practice daily and that is being watchful over our own soul. Our soul has to be such that we have to tend it like a garden. Now when we see, it, see a garden, sometimes if we are not watchful of the garden, what all happens? Weeds grow, a lot of dirt comes, settles there. Without our own knowledge, a lot of dry leaves fall to the ground and the garden looks dirty. Imagine your soul to be like that of a garden which you have to constantly tend and watch over so that insects don't come and lay their eggs there. So that the garden is clean and tidy because that is when the crucible or the cup, the empty cup is visible before God and God pours his grace into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. A full cup, if we are full of our pride, full of our jealousy, full of our envy, full of hatred, the grace of the Holy Spirit can never enter within our hearts. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Amen.